Hello guys, I'm Rob and welcome to a new video. First off, I want to start by saying that Intel naming scheme, more precisely the suffixes, are absolutely mental. I started writing this video thinking, yeah, this will be a light and easy video to make. Wrong. I ended up with just six letters left after a lot of digging. Also, this video is only about desktop and mobile chips. I'm not including servers and embedded chips. With that out of the way, let's start with the most known suffix, the K. Unlike Ryzen, Intel processors aren't uh, naturally unlocked and uh, only K processors can be easily overclocked. So be sure to buy a K processor if you're interested in overclocking. Also, about that, just for the fifth generation that, by the way, barely existed in the first place, Intel decided to briefly change the K to a C for example, with the i5 65 cent, uh, 70, 65. For example, with the i5 5675C, and you guessed it, the C meant unlocked. Not sure why they changed it for just one generation, but I told you this video is gonna be wacky. Hello, hello, this is Ralph from the future here, uh, editor mode. I just discovered that the C suffix doesn't just mean that it's overclockable, it also means that it has a fairly good interior graphics in there. Uh, for example, the chip we were talking about has an Hyveris Pro HT6200, if I recall correctly, and it should be comparable to an uh, HUD750. So anyway, that was just a note, back to the video. Moving on and going for a second on the very high-end side of Intel, we find the X and the XE suffixes. They both symbolize the top of the line workstation level CPUs, but the XE will always be the one on the, on the top. For example, we have the i9-7900X, 20X, 40X, 50X, and finally at the top, uh, the i9-7980XE. Another suffix that a lot of people will recognize, especially in recent years, is the F. Again, unlike Ryzen, Intel processors always have some form of integrated GPUs, unless specified otherwise. And this letter specifies exactly that, a lack of iGPU. A famous example in recent years would be the i5-10400F. One more, mostly unused variant is the P suffix. As uh, the time of writing, it only got five different CPUs and uh, the meaning slightly changed to time. At first, for example, with the i5-2450P and uh, the 3350P, the P just meant without integrated graphics, which got replaced by the F suffix, as I explained before. But the meaning of the P later evolved in the, with slower integrated graphics such as the case the i5-6402P. There's also what I think is a mobile variant for the P suffix. So far I only found it in the i5-6198DU, which is exactly the same as the i5-6200U, apart uh, from the slower graphics. Let's now move to mobile chips for a bit and let's talk graphics. Take a seat, this might flow you. For a small period of time, during the 8th gen, Intel made several CPUs with a G suffix. In collaboration with AMD, yes, that AMD, to make honestly great integrated graphics on their chips, for laptops and more importantly, nukes. It wasn't exactly a normal chip, as you can see, the GPU chip is on the other side of the PCB and itself it looks huge, but it's a very interesting product nonetheless. Performance-wise, the RX, Vega, M, GH and GL were around a 1050 Ti or 1060 laptop. Also, real quick, if you're enjoying this, please drop me a like and subscribe. It took a lot of patience to make this video. Thank you. Nowadays, though, the G assumed another meaning. It's often accompanied by a number, either 1, 4 or 7, that indicates the graphics level of the interior graphics with 1 being the least powerful and 7 being the most powerful. We're not talking on the level of the previous suffix, it's still just a normal Intel iGPU. For example, the Iris XE inside the i5-1135G7, that's a mouthful, is about on par with the Vega 6 inside the Ryzen 5 4500U. There's also H, which means high performance optimized for mobile, the H variants sports a much higher TDP and a much higher base and turbo clock. 
making it a better choice for, let's say, portable workstation and gaming laptops with dedicated GPUs as well. There's also a desktop variant of the H suffix, the R, but I'm putting that in quotation marks since the CPU is still based on a BGA ball grid array which is usually used in laptops. The chip was uh, mostly used in micro PCs, like the ones you're seeing on the screen right now, which are very thermally limited, so it made sense, I guess, to have a chip in within a laptop and a desktop in terms of TDP. Speaking instead about variants for other micro PCs, the B suffix for the 8th generation of Intel was a series of a few processors specifically custom made for Apple for their 2018 Mac minis. Speaking of actual difference, the only notable one is that the chip has a BGA instead of an LGA land grid array socket, so it's uh, soldered on the board, even if everything else stayed the same when compared to a normal one. Recently, some 11th Gen B processors came out, but given that Apple shift all their attention on their M1 chips, I highly doubt that the new ones were custom designed by them. We shall see. Continuing to speak about Apple, they also asked Intel to make a custom variant for some 10th gen uh, uh, CPUs for the 2020 MacBook Air lineup. An example can be the i7 1060NG7, Jesus Christ, which is really close to a standard i7 1060G7. Uh, if not for some slight adjustment uh, for the base and turbo clock. Another variant that was mostly used on SFFs and only one PCs was the T suffix. It stands for Power Optimized Lifestyle, which meant a much lower base and turbo clock speed, which meant in return a much lower TDP. But this time the CPU was socketable, so you could upgrade it later if you wanted. Another similar one is the S suffix. It was used up until the 4th gen and it meant performance optimized lifestyle. Or at least that's what it meant before, because if you go to see now the i9-9900KS, the S doesn't mean performance optimized lifestyle. It doesn't have a lower TDP than the regular one. It means special edition for some reason. It basically just a higher clocked uh, 9900K out of the box. But why do you use the same suffix that you use for other CPUs that weren't even long ago, I don't understand Intel, why you, why you like this, why are you like It was the same idea, lower clocks, lower TDP, but not that extreme. Let's make an example. The i5-4460 has a TDP of uh, 84 watts, the S variant 64 watts, and the T variant 35 watts, you can see a pattern. Let's move briefly back to mobile before entering the confusion zone, the final three suffixes that got me very confused that I still can't fully understand. Anyway, the Q letter was used until the 7th gen for i5 and i7 to simply define quad cores, because unless specified otherwise, the majority of them were two cores and four threads. And up until the 4th gen, Intel was also using the M prefix, to simply define mobile chips and distinguish them from the desktop variants. But we're not done here, there are two more mobile fixes. The first one is the letter U, with a TDP around 15 watts lower clocks when compared to an M chip, but we can go a step further. Introducing the Y suffix, these variants got their TDP around 7 watts basically consuming as much as your standard desktop hard disk. It got an even lower base and turbo clock, but not by a lot. It's still really impressive for how little it consumes. For example, uh, let's examine uh, the i7-10... 5... For example, <laughs> let's examine the i7... 10 y it still has 4 cores and 8 threads, sure it nears the 1 GHz of base frequency, but it goes up to 3.2 GHz on all cores and 4.5 GHz in single core, that's bonkers, if you ask me. We are now entering the confusion zone, take a seat please. Ok, so I'm gonna start with something I'm mildly confident in, since there is some proof of what I'm saying. The, <laughs> the suffix L. I've seen this suffix used in a bunch of uh, first-gen mobile i7 and that's it, nowhere else. For example, the i7-6400 
640LM when confronted with the 640M just shows slightly lower clocks not 10 watts lower TDP. So for me it was another power saving lifestyle for laptops or something where Intel realized they were actually making a stupid idea and just killed the suffix. Now suffix A. I have two different examples for this one. For the first one I wrote down a Pentium M uh, 745A and the major difference with the standard 745 is probably that the 745A has a higher TDP and that's it. I couldn't find any more info regarding this and my only source is from CPU Boss which generally isn't the best source. Hello again, I told you I was going to be back. Um, this big dummy here, I didn't realize that he could just go on the Intel official site and grab the information there. I don't know how I missed that, but I mean, here it is. The information on CPU Boss is correct. So yeah, the, back to the video. The other example is the Core M. 5Y10A. Now we know the Y is uh, referred refer to the lower TDP, 7 watts, etc. But since the uh, A uh, at the end of the model is lowercase, I don't even think this is a suffix, it's just the model name that is like that, I, I think at least. The last one is the J suffix, founded for example in the Pentium 4 uh, 570J. And uh, Drum roll, please. I have no fucking idea, really. I couldn't find anything of value on the internet. Please, if you know, tell me so I can pin your comment. And with this, it was all I had to say. I have all my sources linked in the description below in a pasta bin link. Open it if you're interested. Like the video, leave a comment if you want, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.